subscribe to Gamers Trove. Evil West. Bro, what the fuck was that? So, I have finished Evil West and let post-game depression sit with me for a few days to then start writing this retrospective look at the game and everything it had to offer by the end of it. I was very excited to keep playing the game after my initial impressions video I made a few weeks back and turns out there was a lot more awesomeness to be had but also a few minor niggles that thankfully didn't ruin the overall experience but did in parts leave a small mark. Kind of like when you take the most badass nap on the couch and when you wake up the couch has imprinted itself onto your face that kind of mark but before we get into all the negatives that there were in the game which there were quite a few of honestly let's first discuss the evolution of gameplay in evil west and how the game fared after the initial hours of button mashing and storytelling now kicking things off with the evolution and immersivenessness of the story itself and i do hope that's a real word without spoiling anything i will say i was expecting the lore to get maybe a bit deeper and after the initial hours in the game where it seemed to allude towards a larger world or a conglomerate of sorts of vampires the story turned out to be a bit more self-contained instead of showing us a bigger picture to be looked at it wasn't bad by any means i mean it does keep you playing but it does leave a, a bit more to be desired by the end of it if i'm being completely honest special mention goes out to the character named james harrow for taking the price for being the most obnoxious and annoying video game character in modern gaming broski oh my god Goodness, this guy. I was praying to bejesus himself that this guy turned out to be evil, that I could just unload all of my bullets onto his face hole. Anyway, back to the overall story, as I do think the ending does kind of set itself up for a sequel, but that remains to be seen if, if the devs actually decide to give us Evil West dose and hopefully not bury the game completely underground. There are a few twists and turns along the way, and I wouldn't have really minded if they had stretched the game with a few more hours of content after my 10-ish hour playthrough. I I just wanted to shoot more sangu sujas and werewolves broski like can you blame a brother for fulfilling his lifelong dream of being hugh jackman from the movie van helsing i mean who doesn't want to be the handsome hunk of meat and that does somewhat segue into our next bit which is not reviewing hugh jackman's every movie in hollywood ever but actually the evolution of the actual combat in the game and i gotta say the shooting felt very nice overall with a ton of combinations to be done now i do want to quickly mention that if you agree with me on this matter or as well if you just disagree in general or even agree with me on everything that has been said so far or will be said over the rest of the video please do let me know in the comments down below my broski now unfortunately the game never introduced a rating system like i was really hoping for but it did introduce a surprising amount of new weapons and gear to use for bad assery we interrupt this program with some breaking news. It seems the awesome person watching this video has yet to subscribe to the channel or like the video. And in an unprecedented turn of events, he is now full on uh, thinking about it. It is indeed free to do and would help me out a absolute ton. I mean, it would help the person of the broadcast a lot. Uh, news. It's the news. Damn it. We will update you on more information once we get it. So for now, let us return to the scheduled program. From the semi-automatic bowgun to just straight up dynamite to throw at your enemy, which was hilarious. And also the super freaking awesome looking ultimate attack. It felt like the game had something to give me behind every low resolution cutscene. And I honestly really liked that bit all the way through. The game's benefit as well. And the player, of course, all the different weapons work better against specific kinds of sanguisuge. And you do find yourself constantly switching things up mid-battle to try and maximize your output of badassery. Broski, I do love saying the word sanguisuge. It's hilarious. Once further into the game and through finding special skills in special chests dotted around, you get to supercharge all of your weapons with electricity. And that just makes the battle so much more manageable, bro. Like, let me tell you, the game does not really shy away from just throwing waves upon waves of enemies at you. And during the latter stages of the game, you might just be fighting bosses after bosses again and again. And it all just becomes super hectic at times. Now, anyone who has watched any amount of videos on the Gamers Trove channel, of which I do want to shamelessly plug my channel here of course go check out some more of the videos it's really cool stuff if i do say so myself but in any case you might know of my dislike towards reusing old bosses as normal mobs in the game for the sake of just slowing you down on your journey now, the game does unfortunately take it to another level by giving you multiple bosses to fight at the same time like what the hell which did really grind my gears by the end of it and kind of does at this moment in time but once you learn the best way to beat any specific enemy as well as just 
upgrade your gear in general, it tends to just become more manageable like I said earlier. But I do have to say there are a few times in the game where you just fight the same combination of bosses over and over again and it does tend to just become a bit more frustrating than it would normally do because it might be a full level of just fighting the same combination of two bosses over and over again like at least you could have just make more enemy variety in the game or just mesh two sanguisuges together and let me fight a giant web shooting werewolf who also happens to shoot bees out of its fingers and on a side note to this bro f those enemies f those two enemies especially the bee guy and the web shooting werewolf like what the hell was that now what doesn't get old at any point in the game thankfully is the freaking awesome combat until the end broski like the shooting feels super nice the different weapons you unlock just add to the overall awesomeness and i am 100 percent convinced that the pummeling action in this game when you stun an enemy should be in literally every game made ever like stardew valley minecraft whichever game you want to think of fifa even when you stun a person you get to give him the absolute six piece combo of dreams broski it's so cool now the out of combat exploration does also change a little bit kind of and it gives you a breath of fresh air as instead of having you just progress in the game like you have until now the game instead on a few occasions i might add does throw some very light puzzles your way to kind of mix things up there's also this singular open area bit which was weird but a also a surprise in a good way for myself at least now none of the puzzles in the game are any level of head scratchers at all but they do like i said earlier give you this breath of fresh air that you haven't seen so far in the game they're very light but they're also kind of cool the levels themselves and the evolution of the environments in the game stay fresh and nice like a bottle of sprite with the scenery changing a lot what at first seems like it might just repeat the same scenery of old western shacks and caves does change to just bigger shacks and caves admittedly but in a good way you get some eerie swampy bits as well some snowy mountains which all look cool but the last two levels especially were the most memorable for myself as one has you do a heist of sorts in a town and one takes place in a burning theater or theater which looked super freaking cool overall now there are a surprising amount of hidden nooks and crannies dotted about too so if you end up playing this game i do highly recommend checking every corner as there are all kinds of hidden skills dotted about that will definitely come in handy during your playthrough now on the flip side i did expect the outfits in the game to look a bit nicer maybe than just being a change of color and would have at least been nice to see the same outfit changes in the cutscenes themselves now i did mention this in the original first impressions video but the cutscenes were just weird for me personally this does perfectly segue to talking about the not so great bits about evil west that i've been hyping up so far that i personally found to be either weird or just out of place because as with most games there are always bound to be negatives to them and it's down to the player's own subjective opinion on whether the positives outweigh the negatives enough to still enjoy the game i found this weird bug where every time i would do some new action that hasn't been done before like using a skill for the first time or an upgraded skill or even a weapon the game just jitters very weirdly and it was very noticeable to the point that when entering a boss fight or any fight for that matter with this fresh new and yet to be used skill it gives the enemy a pretty much guaranteed first swing at you because you just have to deal with the jittery another weird bit for me personally was the transitions between cutscenes in the game as sometimes it just skips to another scene altogether like you just blacked out and woke up in another level uh, it was weird sometimes it just even the ending of the game it doesn't really transition all that well it does set itself up for a sequel admittedly but the way it ends just feels abrupt and just like suddenly the game just ends or it just feel like that way i don't know if it's just me but it does feel that way honestly now with all this being said both positives and negatives included it all comes down to is the game actually fun and i do like to come back to the same question in pretty much every video that i post or in general when i'm just playing a game ultimately gaming boils down to a single question that we all should ask ourselves whenever we are gaming at broski if i had said it from the get-go in this video then this video would have been like 10 seconds long which coincidentally is about the same amount of time that i do last in bed anyway i think the game overall is fun so i would answer that question with a resounding absolutely there are bits that make it seem like a b or even c tier game but that doesn't matter in the greater scheme of things as the gameplay is addictive to be honest and just a joy to run through the combat in evil west is by far its saving grace and for good reason as i've mentioned numerous times already it's just awesome from the unforgettable pummeling to the very 
various ways you can take down the numerous combinations of annoying Sanguisugis. Welcome to Camp Refugi. In the game, I came out of it satisfied after the credits roll. It's not the best game ever by any means, broski. But whatever happened to games just being fun to play and just being an okay good time, right? It's pretty brainless in the end, but that's a good thing in games sometimes. Not every game is supposed to have everything in it and be absolutely perfect with super deep lore and open worlds bigger than the IRL world that we live in and all be so convoluted. Linear games still have their place in gaming for damn sure and I for one am here for it. Will I replay the game? Probably not but I will be on the lookout for a eventual sequel hopefully fingers crossed they make a sequel or at least add some DLC to the game or like a wave or a horde mode. Those would be really cool additions now that I think of it like spontaneously. But should you play this this game? How the f*** should I know? I was only here to tell you my impressions and my overall experience with the game. So now it's your turn to tell me yours. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Evil West overall. If you like the game, if you didn't like the game, bro, let's start a conversation down below. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for myself for this week yet again. I hope you did like the video. If you did, be sure to click that like button down below. And like I said, comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. We have broken the 500 subscriber mark. I will be. So let's celebrate all together by subscribing to this video or this channel that I don't know, man. That was a weird plug. In any case, I hope you guys enjoy your day, whichever time of day you watch this ad. I don't know what else to say in this outro. So there is a shirtless guy just saying, you gonna make me do something, I'm gonna regret. Anyway, guys, ask the prontissimo. You gonna make me act up. <laughs> you gonna make me do something, I'm gonna regret.